Hello everyone, you are watching a segment of the countdown program from October 30, 2023. Today is Monday, see our full programs on the Patreon resource. And thanks to everyone who is becoming our patrons right now. I'll talk about the topics of the postscriptum program a little later, but now to the most important thing. Sometimes they show themselves fully, throwing off their hypocritical masks and spilling the beans in random revelations. The desperate war against Ukrainian Nazism brought the cave to pogroms against Jews. On Sunday, October 29, an anti-Semitic crowd broke into the Makachkala airport building and onto the airfield, trying to prevent refugees from Israel from entering Dagestan, who, according to rumors, were supposed to fly to Makachkala. At the same time, warehouses and shops at Makachkala airport were looted. Office equipment and equipment for sales areas and galleries, as well as computers and cash registers, were broken or stolen. According to some reports, the angry crowd that committed the anti-Semitic pogrom consisted of one and a half thousand local residents. A large group of protesters broke onto the airfield after learning that a plane from Israel had just landed in Makachkala. Even children were seen in the crowd, promising to kill Jews with a knife. Security forces landed at the airport and encountered fierce resistance from protesters. According to official data alone, 20 people were injured during the riots, two are in serious condition. The local Ministry of Internal Affairs has already reported that more than 150 active participants in the riots have been identified, 60 of them have been detained and taken to the police for further investigation. Meanwhile, the situation in the Caucasus is becoming increasingly tense. An all-Caucasian protest action is planned here for October 30, so all the moaning of feeble experts from the opposition was dashed by harsh reality. In the Caucasus, the people are not downtrodden, and are not enslaved at all. He just hates Jews, and the hot children of the mountains have protest potential. Only he is not anti-Putin at all, but pro-Islamist and anti-Semitic. The republics of the North Caucasus, immersed under Putin in the dark Middle Ages, present their matured cave mentality under the banners of dislocated Islam and wild archaism. This is such explosive fundamentalism, mixed with aggressive ignorance and hatred of Jews, and, moreover, fueled by the speeches of Erdogan, who is mentally close. Where is Kadyrov? Have you already condemned the forays of fascist savages? Is the academician silent, and he doesn't even demand an apology? And why? Is it because the Islamization of Russia, with official support for the actions of Hamas, is already in full swing? The head of Dagestan, Sergei Melikov, hastened to find the instigators, which he announced at a briefing. They say that it is the Banderite enemies who are shaking up the situation inside Dagestan in order to cause image damage to Russia, where there is no anti-Semitism, but on the contrary, there is a fight against the Nazis. Melikov officially announced that all residents of Dagestan empathize with the victims of the actions of unrighteous people and politicians and pray for peace in Palestine. At the same time, the compassionate Melikov kept silent about the casualties among Israelis who died at the hands of Hamas militants. But he promised that law enforcement agencies would give a legal assessment of what happened, clarifying that opponents of our country, from abroad, were trying to destabilize the situation in the Republic. He mentioned the Telegram channel, Morning of Dagestan, in which residents of the Republic were encouraged to go to unauthorized rallies. Peskov also said that the events in Makachkala are the result of external interference, including information influence. However, Putin will speak publicly today at a meeting with the participation of the heads of all law enforcement agencies, as well as Mishustin, Lavrov and Medvedev. Bonzers will bulge their eyes and hypnotize the problem. Watch this and other stories in full on the Patreon resource. Become our patrons right now and look further in this program. The head of the Russian Ministry of Defense, Shoigu, arrived in Beijing to warn his Chinese comrades for the last time that the rat's nuclear patience is not endless, and Russia could enter into a nuclear conflict with Western countries. A study by the American edition of the New York Times showed that the Israeli leadership underestimated Hamas's ability to attack. 
political conclusions will be drawn, but after the end of the military operation. Today, the head physician of the surgical department of Al-Shifa Hospital in Gaza called the situation catastrophic, where hospital patients and displaced persons occupy every square meter. Watch in the program, Postscript. In the Caucasus, processes have been going on for a long time that are not controlled by Moscow. The first results of the Dagestan Sabbath. The Islamization of the North Caucasus republics has been going on for many years, and now Palestinization has been added to it. It is impossible to shake the situation in the Islamic world without receiving feedback from the regions. The propagandist Solovier also saw signs of the impending collapse of the empire in the events in Dagestan. He tweeted a post calling for anti-Semitic rioters to be hanged. Moreover, the propagandist does not consider his call to publicly hang Muslims in multi-religious Russia as an impetus for the start of a civil war. And that is all. See this and other programs in full on the Patreon resource. And thanks to everyone who is becoming our patrons right now. Hugs to everyone. See you on Thursday. Glory to Ukraine.